Yes, sir. It is your boy, KB, the Boston Shifter Magazine.com. And today I'm being joined by a legend in the Canadian uh, music landscape. He's brought us some legendary music videos like Let's Ride, Northern Touch, and more recently, Wait For You, as well as films like Superfly. But today we're not talking about music videos or films. We're talking about uh, his latest initiative that really has the chance to bring some healing um, in our community through his organization, Operation Prefrontal Cortex. He's released some online gar- guided meditation uh, series that really, um, as I said, has a chance to really uh, bring some healing in our community. So today we're talking to none other than Director X. Thank you so much for joining me. What's up? So let, let's go back to the beginning, because you know, in first hearing about this initiative, like I, I was kind of shocked to hear about your own firsthand experience with gun violence, because I, I, I heard you talk about gun violence before online, you know, some, some Instagram lives, but I didn't know you actually had a firsthand um, experience with this. Tell us a little bit about your your experience as being on the receiving end of, of gun violence. Yeah, you know, um, bullets go through people. So uh, someone, I was in a nightclub and someone shot somebody in the chest and the bullet went through two people and hit me. Wow. Yeah. You know, but um, that started asking questions like, what would make someone do like, what would make you do something like that? You know? Mm-hmm. What, what, what's going through your brain that you think a fucking club is the right place to shoot somebody, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it got me going down the, the road of uh, how you make decisions. What, where, where is your decision making, right? And came across a bunch of stuff about violence and aggression and that uh, violent and aggressive people, their brains are a little different than the average person. Their prefrontal cortex is too small or smaller than the average, and their amygdala is bigger than the average, too big. Your amygdala is emotional control. Your prefrontal cortex is decision-making. And it sounds like what it sounds like. When your decision-making is too small and your emotions are too big, you know, right? And then on top of that, the science goes a little deeper. Your amygdala can actually turn off your prefrontal cortex. Your emotions can turn off your decision making, right? So um, I don't know if have you ever blacked out or you've heard the story about people blacking out. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. You have yourself. I've I've heard about it, but I, I my you never done. I've I've never done it though. All right. So whenever you hear someone tell a story about blacking out, it's normally um, they're doing something normal. Suddenly something. It's a situation. There's a threat. An attack. Something. There's a black hole, and then they come out. Then their memories start with them attacking. Them, right? They're in the altercation. Mm. Right, your brain will turn off your decision making, and just so you so the uh, many times the decision to shoot someone you didn't even make. Wow. It's just the makeup of your brain. There's a threat, some boom, boom, and the, the emotions say, "Got to do it." I'm taking control. Your emotions take control. So, so meditation reverses this meditation gives volume to your prefrontal cortex and shrinks your amygdala. Your emotions get smaller, your decision-making gets bigger, right? Um, it's like exercising your body. Your muscles get bigger, you get, get smaller. The parts that should be small, get small. And the parts that should be big, get big. And that's what meditation does for your brain. It is brain exercise. It's not some woo-woo thing for monks and, you know what I'm saying, and wear a robe and... I mean, these are folks that have definitely, they're like, uh, going to the gym doesn't mean you need to have a freaking 12 pack, but as serious as some people take the gym, some people take meditation that serious. Either way, everybody doing something, you, everyone knows they have to exercise. You have to do something, even if it's just going out and walking, you need to do something. Same applies for your brain. You got to get some exercise and meditation is how you exercise so, so for you personally, like how long have you kind of assumed that you, I mean, I, I, I assume you're, pr- you're a practitioner as well. Like how long have you kind of been on this journey of just of discovering meditation for yourself? Oh, I've been meditating, I don't know, 15 years now, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe and more. How, and, how, and how has the help, how has it helped you just, you know, what personally, professionally, like how have you kind of just- It's everything. It's, you're just calmer, you're more together. You're just, everything's better. You know, I mean, your one is your, your temper, right? Not that you, I don't get angry, but where 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 my anger takes me is a whole other story, right? And just it's just everything gets better, man. It's like again, having a healthy body. You know what that is? You know, having a healthy brain is like having a healthy body. Things are clearer. It's just it's just a better place to be. 
Now, now, looking at just kind of the, you know, going on the website, looking at the research, looking at everything you guys you know, are doing, I feel like there's even, because obviously there's traumas out in the Black community outside of just gun violence. I feel like even our parents and our, our grandparents have been through some things. Like, do you have any advice for maybe even the older generation and how maybe the, the benefits of for them and how they, they can kind of begin to incorporate this in, in their lives? Well, same thing. It's never too late to start. It's just like it's never too late to get your ass up and take a walk, mm-hmm. you know? And um, it's never too late to start meditating. It's never too late to start exercising your brain. Well, that, that, that's definitely true. I, I agree with that. Um, so when it comes to the artists, you have like a specific artist on here. You have um, Rochester's one of the people we had a chance to speak to him the other day. Rochester, Zine Soul. How did you go about choosing the the artist that would be involved in the project? Um, well, we're bringing in our our friends. You know, the co-founder. Uh, Dell Donnell Adams of Operation Prefrontal Cortex really is out in the community, right? He brought in his people, said, let's do this. Let's make something that people can see and really understand at a glance that this is something for them too, right? Because again, meditation does have a stigma around it as kind of this woo-woo thing for woo-woo people and, you know, it's almost like a, a privileged thing, right? Something that's out of our reach and it's not. It's not, it's, it's very simple to do. Anyone can do it. It's just, it's for us, just like it is anybody else. It's just brain exercise. And the same way no one would say exercising, that's for white people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the same thing goes for meditation. Mm-hmm. The, are there any success stories of people that you've seen like just incorporate meditation or like any kind of transformation oh, yeah. stories when, that you've, you've when, personally seen? Um. When we put message to the man who shot me on Instagram and people really started seeing it, um, I was at the Michelle Obama when she came to Toronto, I was at that event. And this guy comes up to me, X, hey, X, I, I showed my friend your TED talk about meditation. He was just came out of jail, wiling out and just fucking going crazy in the street. Like he was gonna go, he's gonna die and go back to jail. And he started meditating. He's a holy person. Wow. Said he's a whole new person. Right. And we've seen it with classes, you know, the, we've had different uh, schools or uh, uh, like teachers bring meditation to their classrooms or bring meditation to their schools or the kids join together. We've had, you know, groups of kids decide they're going to take meditation around their community and it just helps them man. it calms them. It just it, it takes this weight off, especially when you did in these the places I'm thinking about or, um, this place in Newark and a place out here in Toronto as well. It's very violent, very dangerous in the roads. And it's scary just to walk outside for these kids. And the stress of losing friends. And, you know, I mean, these are traumatic things. And meditation has really helped them um, ease that pressure, right? So, uh, again, this is it's just good for you. It's just good for you. It's like taking a walk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee if you took a walk every day, your body would thank you for it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. It's walking your brain. Mm-hmm. So, so for you, like you talk about like you know schools and stuff like that. Like, what's the ultimate goal with the with this? Is it to get you know get it a part of the curriculum? Is it to like well, like ideally, how far would you like to see this? Um, I, I, to be very honest with you, I have given up on the bureaucracy that we are in. We just got to do it ourselves. They aren't doing nothing for us. The, the evidence for med- not only what meditation does for uh, relieving trauma, what it does for kids, social lives, education, everything itself, kids meditate, everything. So the fact that we have this information and they're just like, ah, whatever, we're ruled by idiots. We're, we're, we're ruled by idiots. They don't care. They're, so long as they get elected, so long as they put on the show, so long as it seems, I don't, whatever it is, even if their heart's in the right place, it doesn't matter. They're not, do, they're not doing what needs to be done. And the things they do feel very performative, but we can do this for ourselves. You don't need a fancy program. You don't need someone to teach you how to meditate. You can just do it. And that's what these videos are about. If you've never done it before, check out these videos, find a meditation that works for you. Everyone has their own way of doing it. You might find one that works for you. You know, uh, I do my meditation. The meditation I do every morning is a visualization meditation. Some other people do mantras. There's all kinds of ways to do it. Right, but finding what works for you, you might be someone who likes just the technical breathing in and out and deep, and you know what I mean. There's that. There's all different ways to do this. Find your way, 
and start to do it. You know, I, I for me, I do it in the morning when I wake up. I sit up in bed and do my meditation. Right? Um, we'll find a way to make it a part of your routine, and your life will get better. Okay, no, I like that. I'm, I'm definitely going to be checking it out. I'm a father of three, so I need some, I need some, some meditation in my life. <laughs> I hear, you know, as, oh, yeah. as, a, as a, and if you can get them doing it too, then you're really on your way. True, true, true. So, for people who are trying to find, um, trying to find these online exercises, where can they find them? Yeah, let's let's bring up the team here, let, guys. Where where can everyone find these? Uh, find let's our talk, videos. Let's talk to the whole team. Yeah, so you can find everything on the Operation Prefrontal Cortex Instagram, which is uh, at op.pfc, and it will also be um, on our our YouTube. So at Operation Prefrontal Cortex, you can search it up on YouTube, or if you go through the Instagram link, you'll be able to find all the videos and releases and updates all there. Okay, perfect. Well, yeah, once again, um, I, mean, I encourage our, our readers, our readers tend to be kind of like the young 18 to 30 crowd. And so I encourage all of our readers to go check out, um, you know, these online um, online teachings and incorporate this into their life. I think we can all use it, uh, you know, no matter what age we are. Once again, grandparents, parents, um, kids. So we'll, we'll definitely be checking that out. Um, Director X, Mahad, thank you so much for your time and uh, wishing you all the best with, uh, with this initiative and everything else you're going on. Thank you, brother.